Oh, hello, my horses. I thought I'd just pop up and say hi and see how you all were. I know that uh, it's early in the week, but there you go. There's always room for a clue with a quick pop-up, I say. And uh, there's always a chance to say dinky-doo to every single one of you. How excellent is that? And welcome, welcome, welcome. Lovely to have you with us. So much to talk about and so little time to do it in. And um, I'd just like tonight to talk about what's been happening with Brexit, of course, and uh, to see where you're coming from with all that sort of thing. Now, about three years ago, let's look at the facts. About three years ago, the people of the United Kingdom, they decided to go to an opinion poll at the same legal standing and status as an opinion poll, and that became the referendum. Would you like to leave the EU, the common market, the single market, the European Union? And um, surprisingly, and I think this was actually a political stunt by a single party that went horribly wrong. That's what I think's happened here. It's all gone a bit pear-shaped. And it's certainly gone a bit pear-shaped since. So there we are. So... Uh, just over half the people decided, yes, they would like to leave. Now, that's not actually the will of the people. That is not the British people. That is some of them, because almost as many wanted to remain. Now, the whole leaving thing has actually gone very wrong. It's gone very badly for us, and it's made as a little bit of a laughing stock, but that doesn't matter. As somebody who knows what it feels like to be a laughing stock, you can take it from me, that is detail and of no great significance. That's modern politics. Now, this is not a political broadcast. I am not political. I am apolitical. I'm not angry. I'm not bitter. I have absolutely no agenda whatsoever. But I do care about what's right for four countries and 70 million people. Now, those that are whinging and moaning that, oh, democracy is dead and all that sort of thing. It's not democracy. 17.4 million do not dictate the future of 70 million. So you can dispel the democracy myth. The will of the people, 17.4 million people out of almost 70 million people. So it's certainly not the will of the people. It's about 15% of the will of the people. That means 75%, 85% still want to remain. Now, people will then say, oh, if they couldn't be bothered voting. It's not a question of couldn't be bothered voting, right? It's nothing to do with couldn't be bothered. A lot of these people are young people. And if they're young people, they weren't able to vote. But they are the future. And do we have a duty of care to those that come after us? I would say yes. So that's what you've got there. That's what you're dealing with. Now we've got TikTok in the clock. Everybody's kicked the can down the road. I'm using all these phrases because that's what politicians are using because they don't appear, the modern politician doesn't appear to have their own vocabulary and their own oratory and be able to actually say what do they think without using these cliched phrases? The clock is ticking. We'll kick the can down the road. We'll pull up the drawbridge. We want our country back. All that sort of thing. So let's forget that at the moment. And I'm going to give you a proposition here. What we could do is go back to the EU and say, look, we've had a proper look at this. And you know we have because there's some very, very, very skilled and clever politicians in the EU and across Europe. And they must be, they must have got past 
They're laughing now. And they must be saying to themselves, what is going on with these people? What kind of people are they? So, here's a way out of the whole thing. The Speaker of the House of Commons last night made an excellent ruling. He found an old ruling that said there is no point in bringing the same business back again and again and again. So there we are. So he's made that ruling. And you've got to highly respect the office of the Speaker of the House of Commons. Because he's keeping everybody in order. Order. So there you are. So how marvellous is that? So that's what's happened there. And we could either take it back to the public, but I would say stop the clock. And very quickly with emergency legislation and some very skilled law work, some fancy pen work, that could be sorted out and halted. And we say to the EU, look, we're not going anywhere at the moment, but if we remain, we want a proper deal. We need to sit round the big table. So there's then no pressure, because what's going to happen on the 29th of March anyway? Hmm? It's like when somebody turns up late for work and a secretary savages them and says, you should have been here at nine o'clock. They're well within their rights to say, why, what happened? So there you are. So what's going to happen on the 29th of March? And we can stop the law there. We can sort the law out. We can stop the legal side of it. Then the clock is not ticking. Then we can go back to what we should have done in the first place as a country and have a proper look at everything. Then people shout, WTO! There's no WTO in place. So you'd be starting from scratch. So it's like saying to somebody, we've got a brand new business. We'd like you to go on the road selling. Nobody's heard of us. Get out there and do some deals. Now, there will be one or two countries going, oh, see if we can get them out of Europe. <laughs> we could be making a few quid out of Britain there. That's what you've got to be careful of. It was the same at the end of the British Empire. We want the British out of our country. Yes, of course. That's so someone else can come in. Yes? So you've got to look at all these things. And again, I stress, I am totally non-political. I may be the world's top broadcaster. I may be the first lord of the internet. But apart from that, I'm just saying. Economic annihilation to leave without a deal. Possible economic annihilation to leave at all. There is absolutely no de facto case for Britain leaving the EU, for the United Kingdom leaving the EU. Four countries, Scotland, England, Wales, Northern Ireland, and the lives of 70 million people affected. That's just in this country. The number of people in the EU is estimated at 510 million. That is one heck of a market. Trust me, if 510 million people came into your shop, could you serve them all? So there we are. So let's look upon this, because at the moment the tail is wagging the dog. There's my clue at the cliches. The tail is wagging the dog, and the dog should be wagging its tail. Let's get the dog wagging its tail. Let's say to Europe, right, here's what's happening, guys, but we do want a proper deal. We're going to sit down at the table. There has been a lot of silliness, a lot of people bumping their gums. That's all over now. We've stopped the clock. There's absolutely no rush. And uh, let's look at this. And we may perhaps just remain, because as I say, there's no point in leaving. Now, I understand why people wanted out nationalistic type characters, a um, little bit of xenophobia, um, a lot of cliched phrases fed to them, getting your country back, all that sort of thing. So there we are. So I would take a look at that. There's Lee Travis and Derbyshire. Thank you, do, Lee. I'm sorry you've all been making your comments and I haven't got to read them out. The political people that dragged us into Brexit have sought residence 
in the EU. Absolutely. Leave with no deal. Adam Peel, that would be just sheer madness and may well lead to economic annihilation. So let's not be silly. Leave without a deal. There's no reason to leave. Why would you run away from a market of 510 million people? Where else are you going to pick that market up? And don't tell me, oh, America and China, that at the moment is a pipe dream. So there you are. Uh, God is watching, dinky-doo. Mark's watching, dinky-doo. Lovely to have you with us, of course. And tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 that Scotty McClue is live the new, doing a wee bit of broadcasting. In fact, we could probably do a little bit of sharing. Can everybody share this right now? And tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 that Scotty McClure is live on Facebook Live just for you. Growing a wee beard, Scotty, yes. Just giving my face a wee break at the moment. If you leave with no deal, you'll be in one pig pile of shecht, says Andy. We're already in a pile of it. Yes, Andy, that's a very, very fair point. You're quite right. Right, let me hear your points on what's going on, because I've said my bit there. Let me run back and see who we've got, and uh, we can run through some of your comments. Fantastic stuff. So there we go. Charles McLaughlin, dinky do. Nice to have you with us. Excellent stuff. Hello, mate. How are you? Says Alan. Yes. I was saying, Alan, I think we should get rid of the word mate. It's not really a Scottish thing, it, uh, unless you've been to sea. Hello, Mr. McClure. How are you, master of all trades? Says Andy Seeker. Hi, Andy. Dinky do. You're a bit of a master of all trades yourself. I say, uh, George is watching, George Relation, there's Nino, Nino Verico, hi Scotty, hi Nino, nice to have you with us, Paul Crookshanks, dinky do Scotty, nice to see you tonight, how are you, excellent Paul, and I hope you're well, and uh, building up your strength again, there's a lot of lovely people out there rooting for you Paul, and hoping that you are well. Fantastic. Stephen Menzies, dinky do. And uh, David Gardner, dinky do. Scotty for PM, says David. Thank you, David. Very, very kind of you. Very kind of you. Dinky do, says Daryl Robertson. Hi, Daryl. Can everybody share, guys? Let's get the little figure up in the top corner there. Right up. Yes? Let's get that up big style now. So if everybody shares... Have to agree with the speaker not stopping the third meaningful vote going through. Uh, the speaker not stopping. So there we go. And uh, dinky do, Scotty, says Adam. Excellent stuff. Lovely to hear from you, Fraser McDuff. Sharon Campbell, where you put off the radio for saying something with the Queen. Sharon Campbell, absolute nonsense. I have never said anything except wonderful things about the Queen. I was put off the radio through some sort of jiggery-pokery because me being on the radio was seriously affecting other radio stations' performance. Right? Scotty McClure's audience was absolutely through the roof. We're looking at getting on for a quarter of a million people per half hour on a local radio station. So there you are. So, no, I have never said or done anything that would get me put off a radio station. These are myths that people like to believe, but uh, they're not factual. I can tell you that right now. Hi, Scotty. I used to listen to you when you were on Hallam FM when I was a young lad. Loved your show. I couldn't sleep if I had you on. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, JJ, Jonathan James Ford. Uh, Andy says, it's going to leave us in dire straits. The politicians have a lot to answer for. Yeah, but they need to go to the EU and uh, have a bit of cap in hand. Otherwise, they're taking us back to the Stone Age and certainly back to 1940 when Churchill and Chamberlain were all sitting there wondering if they should just surrender to Hitler. Uh, that's what's going on there. Dinky do, says Michael Timmis. Excellent stuff. Uh, definitely, definitely, says Robert Abercrombie. Lovely, lovely. JJ, Jonathan, James, Fort Smith. Lovely to have you with us. Can everybody share right now? 
Just do a share to see if we can get this figure up a little bit. I'm sure if you all shared, we would see a difference in that. Um, I think I'll have a job sharing because uh, my other device is, uh, is uh, elsewhere. Uh, the government have ruined this country. So there you are. Uh, good evening, Scotty, says Vanessa Taylor. Dinky do, Vanessa. Love to have you with us, Jim Heron. Uh, Dinky do, Scotty, you tell it how it is. We are responsible for tomorrow's generation. Absolutely. And I'm not sore or bitter or anything. If I thought leaving was the right thing for this country, I would be backing that. So there you are. Uh, sorry, mistyped earlier. I meant uh, the speaker stopping the third meaningful Vote absolutely, Tony. I knew that's what you meant. They have a duty of care just now, not because people didn't vote. They caused this mess. Yes, they did. It was a political stunt in one particular party that went horribly wrong. So there you are. But the truth is, almost 80% of MPs wish to remain. And um, I would think that uh, those that wish to leave will virtually have disappeared. I mean, there's a march going on organized by um, a political personality. Uh, and I think there's maybe about, I don't know, 50 people in the march or something like that, you know. That's not exactly a demonstration of wanting to leave, is it? Um, so you're just going to have a few kind of... Um, xenophobes and idealists and that sort of thing. Um, they thought they could have their cake and eat it. They've been put in their place by the EU. Yes, I mean, you've got to respect the offices of the EU. Uh, you know, these people know exactly what they're doing. They're, they've brought us peace and prosperity for 73 years. Not bad. And the last 50 as well. 29th of March has gone, Scotty. It's been put forward to June, just to give them a bit longer to scratch their heads. Excellent. Good. So three years down the line, we're still in the EU, and I think that's absolutely fine. In fact, it's excellent news. So there you go. Uh, Hello from Derbyshire, says Lee. Hello, Lee Travis in Derbyshire. Dinky do. Lovely to have you with us and a very, very warm welcome. Right, get Shane again. Come on, share, 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 guys. The political people dragged us into Brexit and they've sought residence. The EU says James. Absolutely, James. So there we go. Um, excellent stuff. Good morning, dinky Do from Australia, says Erica Meyer. Uh, as soon as Brexit happens, the UK will sink into recession immediately. Of course it will, Goddy, because we've got nowhere to go. Um, I mean, they're on about WTO and all that sort of thing. Wally G, hello, good sir. Hello, Wally G. And thank you for all your contributions to that wonderful radio show on a Friday, Saturday and Sunday night on Nation Radio 96.3 on the FM. Thanks, Wally G. Wally G is our resident historian on the radio and very good he is. Definitely agree with the speaker not allowing the third vote. Uh, what's your thoughts on the worst prediction for a no deal? You don't want to go anywhere near a no deal, Richard. It's completely and utterly pointless and it's madness. It could lead to economic annihilation. Look at the economic side of it. I'm not interested in the ins and outs of the politics. I'm interested in the economics. Love from Paisley, says Peter Ewan. And to you, Peter, thank you. So true, Scotty. Yes, it was the best radio show, Scott FM, with Scotty McClue. And uh, I would never, quite the antithesis, have said anything about the Queen. These stories get put about, oh, I think he said something, you know. No, I've never said or done anything that would get me put off the radio. Uh, Lee Shanley, can you please tell Lynn that I love her? <laughs> no shout out again because I'm from England, huh? Says Lee Travis. Lee Travis, you've already been shouted out, I think, twice, if not three times now. Uh, Sean Morrison loved you on Rio with Rufus, if that's how you spell it. And uh, all your bus seats, so there you are, Gordon Sterling, the purveyor of um, bus seats. What an interesting business. I hope it does well, Gordon. There's many a market for a lovely bit of 
colonized hide. Uh, somebody please share in the direction of the Prime Minister. Perhaps she'll recognize some common sense. And it appears in front of her, says Gordy Boy. What a lovely thing to say, God. Yes. Uh, Greg Campbell's watching a fine fellow. Cancel the whole thing. It's a joke, says Greg. Thank you, do, Greg. Lovely to hear from you. One of my favorite colleagues. We need to stay part of the EU. Yes, we do. Thank you, do, from Kirkcaldy, says Liam Bar the Langton, Liam. Uh, do you think all the member states of the EU will agree to the extension? I can't see it. Well, yes, why not, Tony? It's in their interest to do so. Anything that keeps the UK in longer is in their interests. Excellent stuff. Uh, Marie McGoldrick, dinky do. East Bride, loud and proud, sir. Good evening, says Greg. Excellent, dinky do. Uh, gotta love Scott here, says Ali here. I thank you, Ali. And dinky do. Lovely to have you with us. Law, me a Scotsman. A naughty gnat. So there you are, says Ian Johnston. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful stuff. Right. Uh, I shall push off. That should be you up to date with uh, what's what. As I say, I know it's early in the week and you wouldn't be expecting it, but if you can all keep sharing and sharing and sharing, fantastic. Iceberg dead ahead, says Tony Jordan. Absolutely. Ring full of stern. Dring, dring, dring. Hard as starboard. Dring, 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 dring. Stop engines. Full of stun. Right, I'm going to have to dash. Lovely to see you all. Have a think about that, because there's a lot of common sense in what I'm saying. And as I say, I have absolutely zero agenda. Lovely to see you all. Scotty McClue, first lord of the internet, and the one-stop broadcaster saying dinky-doo to every single one of you. ta ra -las.